Rural Economy and Agriculture of the AU Commission, who was meant to be with us, but due to exigencies of um, her office, she's acting chairperson of the AU Commission at the moment. She's unable to join us. She regrets not being able to be part of this uh, important uh, platform. At this point, allow me to introduce the panelists in the order they will speak. The first one was meant to be Her Excellency Commissioner Sako. I will stand in for her and make remarks on behalf of the AU Commission. The second will be Honorable Toko Didiza, the Minister of Agriculture, Land Reform, and Rural Development of the Republic of South Africa. And also, she is the chair of the AU Specialized Technical Committee on Agriculture, Rural Development, Water and Environment. Three will be Honorable Janine Mili Cooper, the Minister of Agriculture of the Republic of Liberia. The fourth will be Dr. Leonard Mitzi, the head of, food, of the Food Security Unit in the European Commission. The fifth will be Honorable Robin Law, the Minister of Agriculture of the Republic of Malawi. Sixth will be Professor Hamadi Idi Boga, the Principal Secretary of the State Department for Agricultural Research in the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock and Fisheries of the Republic of Kenya. Then we shall have a discussant, Dr. Patrick Okori, who is the country director for ICRISAT based in Malawi. And I also wish to introduce Professor Adipala Ekwamu, the Executive Secretary for Reform. He will be the one that will give us, give welcoming remarks before I invite the panelists. The structure of today's webinar has five parts. As you may have seen in the guidance note that was shared, I believe with all panelists and, and invited guests, we'll have a part one um, covering an, an opening session with two speakers. Then we'll have the panelists as I guided earlier, six panelists. Part three will be a response to the panelists by the discussant. Part four will be questions and answers to give a chance to the participants to be uh, through an interactive uh, session. And then part five will be the wrap up session uh, towards the end. We expect this uh, webinar to last two and, a half, two and a half hours. So by 4.30, we should be done with this webinar. And to be able to do so, I call upon the speakers to keep the observed time and also for um, participants to ask their questions um, in, in, in a manner that is concise uh, so as to give others a chance. Before proceeding, some housekeeping issues. One, you should keep your microphones muted at all times unless you are speaking. The same for the videos. When you are speaking, that's when you turn on your microphone and video. Otherwise, keep muted and video off. Second, we have interpretation services available. At the bottom of your screen, there is a, an, an option for interpretation. When you click on it, you will see three options, English, Chinese, and um, French. But we don't have Chinese. The Chinese channel 
is where you'll find Arabic. So basically we have three languages, English, French, and Arabic, but Arabic is under the Chinese uh, channel. Uh, number three, when it is time for um, discussions or Q and A, uh, I will request you to raise your hand. There's an option for raising your hand so that I can recognize you. Um, but also during the course of the webinar, we do have an option to write in comments or questions under the chat box or the chat dialogue. So those are the house, um, housekeeping or uh, matters uh, to make sure that our webinar goes uh, smoothly. Now, without further ado, uh, we shall go to the structured agenda as presented to us. And I'll begin by inviting Professor Dipala to give uh, opening remarks. Um, but before doing so, I would like to guide the panelists that each of you has 10 minutes uh, to make your remarks. And I would really like to request that you, you respect that time. Um, I don't want to be rude and cut you short. Uh, so I really request that uh, maybe on your phone or on your computer, uh, make sure you observe the time you start. And as the time is ticking down, you make sure that you, you stop so that I don't interrupt you um, in your remarks. Uh, so the panelists will have 10 minutes each to make their remarks. The discussant will have 12 minutes to make the, uh, his remarks uh, after the, the panelists. Um, so with that, allow me to invite Professor Adipala Ekwamu, the Executive Secretary for Rural Forum, to give his opening or welcome remarks. Professor, you have the floor. Thank you very much, our moderator for today, Dr. Baigwa, the Director of Agriculture at the African Union Commission, Honorable Ministers, Distinguished Panelists, Ladies and Gentlemen. Allow me to start by recognizing and thanking our distinguished speakers of today and all the participants of this webinar, where we seek to dialogue on our best to engage African universities together with other actors in advancing agricultural and food and nutritional security in Africa. The forum, which is a network of 138 universities across Africa, greatly appreciates your participation. As a network of universities, specifically founded to promote engagement of African universities in a national agricultural innovation system in, in Africa, we greatly appreciate the African Union and its member states for all the efforts to improve the livelihoods and the competitiveness of our continent. We note with appreciation the focus attention since 2003 Maputo CADAP declaration, declaration by African heads of states to improve performance of the agricultural sector as the fulcrum for economic development in the continent. We further appreciate the European Union through its commission for supporting Africa in its response to addressing food, nutrition, and sustainable agricultural challenges in the continent. Indeed, we are very heartened by the recent development, including the European Union New Strategy for Africa and the European Union Africa Union Africa Poly Dialogue on the new food and nutritional security roadmap. 
Certainly a lot has been done, progress has been made, but like in all development endeavors, a lot still needs to be done. Indeed, the Food and Agricultural Organization reports increased level of poverty and food and nutritional insecurity, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa. Moreover, other recent challenges have emerged that will grossly curtail our efforts. Climate change and variability, and the need for green transition. The need for skill sets, for new skill sets, including digital transformation, widespread jo job unemployment, especially among women and, and youth, the COVID-19 pandemic, the local, the local innovation, innovation, among others. We need to explore opportunities for collaborative action, and we see the twin role of research and skill development backed by policy support as critical. Today's webinar has been conven convened by the forum as part of fostering learning and gal galvanizing collective action. The African ministers meeting held in Cape Coast, Ghana in, 29, in December 2019, task reform to mobilize participation of African universities in national policy frameworks and implementation protocol. Hence, the ongoing European Union and African Un Union policy dialogue on the new sustainable agriculture and food and nutritional security roadmap provides opportunity for us to learn from the European Union and, and African member states on what is ongoing on the ground, their proposed initiatives, so that we see our best African universities and their partners, including our European counterpart, Agrinatura, could best support the efforts in developing and testing some of the needed actions. To the European Union, African Union Commission, and our member states, I affirm commitment of Ruforum and its member universities to participate in the European Union, African Uni Union Food and Nutritional Security Roadmap, and indeed the CADAP implementation protocols and other related initiatives. In this regard, Reform appeals to the European DEVCO, DEVCO for greater support to capacity building and research in Africa, giving particular attention to women and youth. Indeed, I affirm interest of African universities to participate in the CIRA. Finally, I call upon the African Uni Union Commission to mobilize support for the five continental initiatives and other decisions agreed upon by the African Ministers of Agriculture, Education, Science, Technology, and Innovation in Ghana in 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, once more, thank you very much for honoring our invitation. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Adipala. Your call for action and support from the African Union Commission and from the European Commission is loud and clear. And I hope that through the discuss today's discussions, uh, we can advance and bring to fruition uh, the call that you have made. So at this point, in line with the um, lineup of speakers that I, I mentioned, I will now give my remarks on behalf of Her Excellency Ambassador Joseph Asako, the Commissioner for Rural Economy and Agriculture. On behalf of Her Excellency, I would like to thank Ruforum for inviting the African Union Commission 
to be part of this webinar today. I also wish to thank the panelists and discussant in today's panel for agreeing to be part of this webinar. I also wish to welcome the participants, all the participants that have registered and are participating in today's webinar. The AU Commission values the important role that is played by universities in educating practitioners and research, researchers that are key, that are a key foundation for Africa's agriculture. And that contribution is through training and research. And in particular, imparting skills to young men and women that will be leading agriculture on the continent. We are proud about the role that universities play in generating knowledge through research, especially on topical matters of the day. And as Professor Adipala highlighted, Africa's agriculture at the moment has several challenges and we would like to see universities play a bigger role in conducting research to generate knowledge that can help us to overcome or manage those challenges facing Africa's agriculture. We also recognize the role that is played by universities in guiding governments and development, development partners on policy choices that need to be considered to either invest or make policy choices uh, that guide public, public policy. With regard to today's uh, subject for discussion, we would like to see this network of 138 universities across the continent to be involved in different aspects of advancing Africa's agricultural transformation agenda, the Comprehensive Africa Agriculture Development Program, popularly known as CADAP. And we see the involvement in two broad, or we call upon the involvement of the Rural Forum Network in two broad um, areas. One is supporting our governments in the domestication of the CADAP Malabo commitments. As you may know, the heads of state and government initiated the CADAP agenda in 2003 in Maputo, Mozambique, and they, are, they reaffirmed their commitment to the CADAP agenda in 2014 in Malabo, Equatorial Guinea. In the Malabo Declaration, which has seven commitments, the heads of state expected the African Union Commission together with the AU Development Agency and um, partners to domesticate these commitments in the national agriculture investment plans. Because that is the only way we can be sure that they will be implemented and that member states can make investments that will lead to attainment, attainment of those goals. And so we expect that our universities across our 55 member states can be involved in that process through production of technical background papers, thematic research on different aspects of the Malabo Declaration, and where needed, they can support our member states in actually drafting the national agriculture investment plans. So this is something that can be done because universities host some of our, the brightest minds on our continent and we ought to be able to, to utilize them um, as much as possible. 
The second area of um, involvement that we see Roforum being involved is in the biannual review process of the implementation of CADAP. In the Malabo Declaration, the heads of state called on the African Union Commission, the AU Development Agents and Partners, to produce every two years a report on the implementation of CADAP. We produced the first report in 2017, the second report in 2019, and the third report will be produced next year in 2021. Uh, we have seen involvement of some of experts from some universities, but no, now knowing the widespread of the network of the forum, I think we can have more African experts involved in the process. And that involvement is basically providing ex high level expertise, training country teams that collect and analyze data at country level, and also being part of disseminating the country reports when those reports are ready. And also the network can, can be involved in convening country dialogue platforms to look at the findings of the individual country reports and discuss how to, uh, what to do with regard to the gaps that are identified in those reports. As I come to the end of my remarks, I wish to, uh, to reiterate the strong relationship that the AU Commission has with the European Commission. We have strong collaboration in various fields that are related to agriculture, food and nutrition security. Basically, in general, we have we collaborate around the, the CADAP agenda, but on the specifics, we have collaboration in the livestock sector, in fisheries and agriculture, in sanitary and phytosanitary um, standards, on ecological organic agriculture, only to mention a few. We do have a strong uh, uh, working collaboration in the AU Commission and the European Commission. And for your information, later this month, uh, specifically on September 28th, we shall be holding the AU EU ministerial meeting. Again, um, signifying the important relationship that exists between the African Union Commission and the European Commission. And so, uh, today's discussion that is calling upon both the AU Commission and the European Commission to work together to support reform is in order and we'll be, we'll be looking forward to uh, strengthening uh, the discussions that can advance that partnership in support of reform. Thank you so much and that ends um, the remarks of Her Excellency Ambassador Jennifer Sako, the Commissioner for Rural Economy and Agriculture of the AU Commission. And with that, I would like now to call upon the first, uh, the second panelist, and that is Honorable Toko Didiza, the Minister of Agriculture, Land Reform, and Rural Development of the Republic of South Africa, who, as I said earlier, is also the chair of the AU Specialized Technical um, Committee on Agriculture, Road Development, Water and Environment. Honorable Didiza, you have your 10 minutes. Thank you very much, Kodri, our moderator for today's session. And I would like to recognize my panelists who are with me on this uh, platform as well as Professor Adipala, who is the Executive Secretary of Rural Forum, um, Dr. Okori, who is the Principal Scientist uh, for Ground Breeding and the Country Representative in Malawi. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I've seen a number of people in the chat are very excited uh, about this forum. I also am excited as the chair of the Africa Specialized Committee on Agriculture, Environment, Rural Development. It is indeed exciting that we can find a platform around which we can work with our universities in the continent and its institutions, particularly to look at how they can give input on the work that we must discharge as countries in ensuring food security of our societies. Allow me to thank and acknowledge the efforts and commitment displayed by organizers of this regional universities forum for capacity building in Africa, commonly known as RU Forum. Your vision of vibrant, transformative universities catalyzing sustainable, inclusive agricultural development to feed and create prosperity for Africa still remains relevant, more so after the advent of COVID-19 and its impact in the agricultural sector. Academia has to play a pivotal role in fostering innovative and responsive research in this challenging time for African agriculture. I was asked to speak on specific issues that relate to my country, South Africa. Food security is a fundamental strategic imperative of the South African government as highlighted in many government policy documents, including our constitution. The right to have access to sufficient food by all citizens is enshrined in section 27, subsection 1b of the constitution. However, South Africa, like many of our African countries, is not spared from the challenges of food insecurity, noting the current millions of our people that experience inadequate access to food currently. The advent of COVID-19 also threatens to erode the gains that we had made towards the fulfillment of the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goal number 17, with specific reference to SDGs 1 of eradicating poverty and SDG 2 of ensuring zero hunger. There are a number of factors that affect food nutrition and sustainable agriculture in South Africa. I will enumerate a few of these. Loss of agricultural land to competing sectors. Competition for land by other sectors is very fierce. If one were to look at one of our provinces known as Mpumalanga, which has been really one of the agricultural province in terms of maize production, livestock and others. Majority of the land has now been taken over by mining. If one looks at climate change, the Western parts of our country are getting drier and agricultural production of agronomic crops is expected to shift towards the east of the country. The change in the climate condition is impacting on the production capacity of our country and further challenges us to adapt and mitigate against the challenges that are being observed by our scientists. And I'm sure this is where university can also work with us to look at new varieties that we can develop to contend with the challenges that we're having working with our agricultural research council in our country. Pests and diseases are also one of the problems that we are experiencing. Last year, for instance, we had a problem of food and mouth, highly pathogenic influenza, fall armyworm, and migratory pests, particularly in the Northern Cape. The control of transporter pests and diseases is important to ensure food and nutrition security. We are also a country that has water scarcity. And therefore this again, poses challenge in terms of uh, agricultural productivity. Growing levels of unemployment and poverty is another challenge that we face. South Africa through policy and legislative intervention is already responding to the challenges as outlined, but due to the brevity of this intervention, I will restrict my intervention to the whole of government approach that we have adopted towards tackling these matters. Government, business, labor and community through our network structure, have also agreed to work on a social compact within agriculture and agro-processing to ensure that challenges in this sector are tackled with verb by all stakeholders. I was also asked to touch on the work that South Africa has been doing with the European Union. The European Union has supported South Africa in addressing food 
uh, nutrition and security in our country. Some of this work relate to Soils for Africa project, which will overcome constraint in the compilation of soil databases for Africa, as these are often compilation of databases generated for different purposes, and therefore based on a variety of methods for soil sampling and analysis. Soils for Africa aims to develop a soil information system that uses a sound sampling framework, uniform methodologies for data gathering, accompanied with thorough documentation of these methodologies. The project will develop a methodology that can also be based or rather be used for continental scale in terms of soil quality monitoring in the future, as well as for national level data collection and soil monitoring. The second project relates to Suracasa project. This is the Agricultural Research Council um, where is Agricultural Research Council has been involved in the compilation and submission of proposals in reply to the H 2020 topic SFS 50 2017, supporting international cooperation activities on agriculture soil contribution to climate change mitigation and adaptation. The project is titled Collaboration for International Research on Soil Carbon Sequestration in Agriculture. This project supports the 4 per 1000 initiative on soils for food security and climate. The other project that we are involved in working with the EU as uh, one of our entities, the ARC, relates to the participation of ARC in the long-term EU-AU Research and Innovation Partnership for Food and Nutrition Security and Sustainable Agriculture, which is coordination and support action, whose main objective is to provide a tool for the EU and AU institutions to engage in a sustainable partnership platform for research and innovation on food security on food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture. ARC was instrumental in the work page one of the project which provides support and information services to the various structures that govern the bi-regional partnership in the food nutrition security and facilitates evidence-based decision-making. In relation to the responses that as a country we've had with engagement working with research agencies, as well as university in the design and implementation, as well as the evaluation of our food, nutrition and security uh, and sustainable agricultural policies, frameworks and program. The ARC has established partnerships with various universities in South Africa, collaborating in research technology development, education and training, as well as public awareness. To date, the ARC is the main financial contributor towards the operation of the centers of collaboration at a cost of 2.5 million per year. Each center of collaboration has a mandate in specific priority area. One of these relates to ensuring healthy nutrition through broadening the food base. A collaboration that includes the University of Free State and Deben University of Technology with an objective of developing new food sources, particularly from neglected and underutilized crops, such as Bambara groundnuts, Amadumbe, Amaranth and cowpeas. Providing scientific information about the nutritional value of the new food crops and educate the public. Training students at post grade level and delivering scientific publications. The second one relates to climate change. Collaborating partners include UNISA and University of Pretoria with objectives of conducting research and development to generate knowledge and solutions for agricultural resilience towards climate change. The third relates to agricultural economics. Collaborating partners includes the University of Limpopo, University of Forte, and University of Pretoria with objectives of identifying measuring and demonstrating the impact of investments, both public and private, in agricultural research and development 
on the agricultural sector in South Africa, as well as on the national economy. Conducting seminars, colloquia, short courses, training, and staff exchanges, education and training of postgraduate students and scientific publications. The fourth relates to food security, a center of excellence established by the Department of Science and Innovation. ARC is participating as a collaborating partner with other entities. South Africa also collaborates with the Southern Africa Development Community on the implementation of the Regional Vulnerability Assessment and Analysis Program. The program aims to understand the livelihood system in various livelihood zones, district, local municipalities, provinces, and national level to determine the extent of food and nutrition insecurity in, the, in these areas. Chairperson, while having said this, in terms of the collaboration between government, government entities and our university, it is important to say there's more that needs to be done to engage the private sector as well as our communities to ensure that they are involved as critical actors in the partnership for developing food, nutrition, security, and sustainable agriculture in our country and also in the continent. Efforts should be made to explore mechanisms through which innovation cooperation with the private sector can be enhanced and the possible incentives and policy instruments to attract the private sector in Africa. Our commitment towards Agenda 2063 and supporting the African Union research grant system is key towards enabling the partnership on AU-EU in the food, nutrition, security, and sustainable agriculture, particularly between university. I therefore want to say in closing, as the AU chairperson for Specialized Technical Committee on Agriculture, Environment and Rural Development, as well as the Minister of Agriculture in South Africa. I want to say it is important that all of us support the initiatives of Rural Forum and working with our universities at national as well as regional level to make sure that we address the challenges that we face in terms of food and nutrition security in our country and ensure that in the midst of the challenges of climate change, we're able to continue with sustainable agriculture that will serve all our communities. And in this regard, we appreciate that partnership between ourselves and the European Union will actually work in ensuring that we work together on these areas uh, going forward. Thank you very much, Chairperson and fellow panelists. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Diziza, Diziza for your uh, remarks. Very rich uh, um, remarks that you made, Honorable Minister, um, starting off with uh, talking about the challenges that are facing the South African agriculture sector, the competition between agriculture and mining, climate change related challenges, pests and diseases, the challenge of water scarcity, growing poverty and food insecurity, and then the various programs that the government of South Africa is putting in place. Uh, to respond to these challenges. We appreciate that very much, Honorable Minister, and also ending up with the call uh, to support the involvement of the private sector, but also supporting the various interventions that URU Forum is involved in. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister. We appreciate your time. I do understand that you, you are pressed for time and may not stay the whole period, so we do appreciate uh, you having taken time to, to be with us uh, today. Uh, but we, you are welcome to stay as long as you can. Uh, you are scheduled a meeting. Thank you so much. Um, Godfrey, if I may apologize to my fellow panelists and yourself, as you know, unfortunately, I will have to be speaking to the other uh, conference, AGRA, which you yourself, I'm sure, in the next days will be participating in. And unfortunately, it clashed in terms of my program, but I thought it was necessary that I participate in making the intervention today. My uh, officials will continue to engage so that they can take the questions uh, if some of those come during the debate and the discussion. Thank you very much, and my apologies once again. 
Thank you, Honorable Minister. We really appreciate your presence in today's uh, webinar. Thank you. Our, our third panelist is Honorable Janine Milikuma, the Minister of Agriculture uh, from the Republic of Liberia. Honorable Minister, um, you can take the floor and you two have 10 minutes. Over to you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bahigwa, uh, Honorable Director of DREA. Um, Your Excellency, Dr. Leonard Mitzi, uh, Food Security Head of Unit of the European uh, Commission. Um, uh, Dr. Okori, our moderator. Um, fellow ministers, uh, distinguished colleagues, all protocols observed. Um, Liberia is, as you know, a coastal nation with a total land area of 96,320 square kilometers, 27,100 of those um, uh, uh, square kilometers are agricultural land, 41,790 is forest land. Our 579 kilometer coast land coastline includes some of the most productive fishing grounds in the Atlantic. 70% of our labor force is engaged in agricultural production, albeit on a small scale. Nevertheless, agriculture contributes 39% of the national GDP in 2019, which is up 2% from 2018. With all of these endowments, Liberia remains, however, highly dependent on import, imports, where 73% of all food consumed is not produced locally. Recognizing that safe and sustainable food systems can be a powerful driver for our economy, especially the rural economy, the government of Liberia under the leadership of President George Manewia has prioritized agriculture as a key part of the pro-poor agenda for prosperity and development. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I had scarcely taken my seat as Minister of Agriculture, barely two and a half weeks afterwards, we had the onset of COVID-19 in Liberia. Now this COVID crisis triggered an unprecedented disruption of global and regional supply chains in ways that we did not immediately um, uh, find to be able to project what was going to happen. This, of course, put an undue strain on our food systems, being that we are so highly dependent on imports. For Liberia, this pressure was enormous. So the Ministry of Agriculture developed a four-pronged COVID response looking at immediate and short-term needs and supporting resilient strategies for food and livelihood security. The four prongs were the first was access to finance, which for the emergency, we switched towards purchasing and prepositioning stocks um, in uh, our first um, national uh, buffer stock system we looked at the second part to expand cultivation of food and cash crops, which are key aspects of rural livelihoods. We looked at boosting processing capacity, domestic processing capacity, not knowing when we would be able to access what was available globally. And for the fourth prong, of course, is coordination. Such an ambitious short-term program demands innovations in service delivery and how we do business. We were compelled to design quick impact digital solutions on movement control, given that there were lockdowns and quarantines uh, of various counties and also border closures. We, we looked at developing very quickly an agricultural information management system, warehouse receipt systems, and digital payment systems with which we could fast track uh, the, the emergency responses. We built on other bilateral and multilateral investments as well as our own capacities. Liberia recognizes key 
European Union investments in cassava, rice, cocoa, coffee, and fisheries value chains. We also looked within and fast-tracked our partnerships to complete crop and soil labs at the University of Liberia, Tubman University, and our Central Agricultural Research Institute, CARI. We promoted programs such as the EU-funded Integrated Rice and Fish Farming, which is jointly implemented by Africa Rice, World Fish, CARI, and the National um, Fisheries and Aquaculture Agency. On a policy space, we are reviewing our Liberia Agri uh, Agricultural Strategic Investment Plan and our Liberia National Rice Development Strategy, looking at ways to click quickly implement the Seed Certification Act and Nas National Food Safety Act, um, which have already been signed into law. We depend on regional strategies such as CADEP uh, and uh, looking forward to our implementation of the Africa uh, Continental Free Trade Act. In particular, we turned our eyes to the ECOWAS Rice Offensive of 2014, which Liberia strongly desires to be a part of and improve our self-sufficiency in rice. In boosting production, we looked at fast tracking and agro poll strategy through rice business hubs, um, uh, cassava and oil palm processing hubs and uh, center for cocoa development, centers for cocoa development. We are also prioritizing key enablers like digital agriculture, mechanization, seed system development, food quality standards and certification. In this vein, we welcome the new Team Europe approach that will expand sustainable management of natural resources, our mechanization, input supply, value addition, and market engagement, food security and resilience, and agricultural investment support. Liberia also looks to intensify its engagement with its research institutes, research institutions and universities and we commend Roo Forum for the support they have given on building networks of specialization for our agricultural scientists. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, for us in Liberia, COVID was a wake up call to speed up our own initiatives on food and nutrition security, on sustainable livelihoods and rural development. We recognize that we cannot do it alone, and we welcome the partnerships at regional and continental levels. We welcome the ongoing support from the African Union Commission and the European Union European Commission, as well as other investments through bilateral and multilateral partners, such as the World Bank, the African Development Bank, and the International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAD. With a strong desire to build our national resilience and food food and nutrition security, we are intensifying our collaboration with our own universities and research institutions. We are scaling up our own government investments in agriculture. In particular, we are scaling up our partnerships with our own private sector to establish and run our various agri hubs and processing centers. In Liberia, we are building on our strengths and our natural resource endowments to stimulate and enhance food and nutrition security and sustainable livelihoods, adapting to climate variabilities and protecting our environment. Thank you for the opportunity to address this important forum. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Minister. You have even saved us uh, uh, two minutes uh, of your time. We appreciate you so much. Yes, um, we listened carefully to your intervention, Honorable Minister, uh, in particular to the four aspects that uh, Liberia put in place to respond to, uh, to COVID-19. Um, and also the various aspects um, of the agriculture sector that have been supported by the European Commission. We take note of, the, of your intervention under the FCFTA Act um, responding to the ECOWAS call on self-sufficiency in, in rice and also Liberia's efforts to strengthen food safety and re related SPS measures 
and your commendation to Uru Forum for its support, as well as um, appreciating Liberia's efforts in strengthening the relationship with your universities and research institutions. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Minister, for these, um, for these uh, remarks. Now, I would like to go to, to the fourth uh, panelist. <clears throat> and this is uh, Dr. Leonard Mitzi, who is the head of the, security, the Food Security Unit of the European Commission. Uh, Leonard, you two have your 10 minutes uh, starting. Thank you. You're hearing me, Godfrey. Hello, are you hearing me? Yes, Leonard, we can hear you. We can hear you. Thank you. So, uh, good afternoon from Brussels, and thank you to the ministers, to the distinguished uh, guests and speakers. Um, I just take um, a statement from Minister Cooper from Liberia. Um, COVID is a wake up call. And I think having been myself to, uh, to a UK university and working closely with African universities in my research when I was doing my PhD, I give a lot of importance to what we are discussing today. I think COVID is a wake up call to maybe shake also the way how we do business in terms of research, in terms of linking research to policy. Um, and we, we have heard a lot of experiences um, in the past uh, um, hour um, in a Team Europe approach. What we are trying to do is uh, build up the foundations so that the European Union with the member states can support and continue supporting in a green recovery approach, what we are doing, but also the big challenges that COVID will actually imply and will, Im will, will impact in the coming two to three years. Um, you mentioned a lot areas where we are working closely on um, pests and diseases. Uh, we just mobilized over 60 million in terms of, uh, of locusts, for example, um, uh, the impact of locusts. But I think it's also important to try to anticipate and be more in anticipatory action. The same on future pandemics. Um, we are a bit licking the wounds of, of COVID. Um, we have been doing this for the past months and we might continue doing it in, in autumn and winter and beyond, hopefully until we find a vaccine. So I think it's important and I was looking a bit into the chat room um, that is also part of the EU Green Deal and the EU Farm to Fork, where the European Union is going to prioritize more um, green recovery, green issues, and biodiversity. If we really want to anticipate future pandemics, we want to think more about how to focus more on one health, for example. Um, transmissions between um, animals and humans uh, risk becoming more and more severe. And the last thing we want is another pandemic which we can't anticipate. So I think it's important for African universities with European universities, building up on what we already have. I think what, what we should not reinvent the wheel. There are lots of initiatives. Um, we are just one service, as you know, as development cooperation. There is also the Joint Research Service uh, and the Joint Research Center. We just launched PANAP, which is the Pan-African Network for Economic Analysis. There is DGRTD, DG Agriculture. Together with all of you, in a one holistic approach under the EU Green Deal, I think we can um, work better and try to focus on what we want to prioritize in the next multi-financial uh, period. As you know, we are in a period of cycles in terms of financing. We entered the 2021-2027 period. So we need to build up on what has worked to date and what needs to be prioritized. And clearly One Health is going to be a top priority as will be clearly areas around the regional integration of African food markets. I think this is also a key challenge, and this has to be done in a new way of doing business around food systems. 
So um, we we have Daziras, you know, where many of your universities with our delegations have been collaborating and Dazir also supports a lot of the um, research centers across all the African continent. I think it's important that we see how Dazira and uh, um, the initiatives around Dazira can be built up to actually accompany an African food system which becomes more resilient to climate change, but also can actually readjust, redimension itself to actually um, um, address the demands of an African middle class, which will grow uh, between now and 2050 in terms of new foods, novel foods, local and regional markets. Um, I think this is an opportune moment also where one speaks and links policy to economic analysis, but also to framework conditions. Um, we, we speak a lot about, for example, cocoa. That's what we are trying to do. And the minister mentioned uh, cocoa in Liberia. What we are trying to do in West Africa, starting with Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire, is to look at cocoa value chains from a more holistic point of view, uh, addressing deforestation, addressing labor and labor issues around child labor, but also living income. If we don't do this in a holistic way, where research is at the core in terms of livelihoods, in terms of rural transformation, then um, it will be very difficult to integrate the equity dimension of a value chain with the marketability of the value chain. I think what is also important and what might be also important to prioritize from an African university point of view is the equity uh, and the inequalities which COVID risks to impact uh, across the different value chains, also rural urban linkages and rural urban inequalities. So a social dynamic angle, which needs to be built up in our research agenda, which should be part of the recovery process. So clearly, I would say, um, Godfrey, you mentioned the, the summit. Let's use the, co the coming few weeks and months ahead in terms of the momentum building up to the summit. First of all, to really prioritize agri-food systems at the highest in the EU Africa agenda. Because sometimes let's be honest and clear amongst ourselves, um, in a Christmas tree approach, this is sometimes forgotten um, and might not be as sexy maybe as other sectors. Agri-food systems, and I'm not speaking about agriculture or rural development or nutrition here, it has to be a holistic food systems approach, which would also lead us to put research and what African universities are doing at the core of the scientific agenda of the UN Food System Summit. So from now until next year, when the UN Food System Summit is organized, and it is under the steer of uh, Agnes Kalibata, who is a sister of yours coming from Rwanda, uh, former agriculture minister of Rwanda. And as, as the minister of South Africa mentioned, we are very busy this week with AGRF, which is the African Green Revolution. Uh, discussions where most of the topics we are discussing now are already being discussed and will be discussed in the coming days. I think this is an opportune moment to show and to start showcasing because sometimes we do a lot of things with a lot of projects which we don't showcase enough. We should use today's opportunity to start showcasing what is working, what is working around agroecological practices, around water and water management, around soil use, soil carbon sequestration, around pests and diseases, around socioeconomic issues. If we can show and highlight success stories, which can be scalable um, at a sub-regional level and at continental level, then we can convince more policymakers and more importantly, the multilateral institutions. We, as you know, we were closely with you, with FAO, with EFAD, with WFP, um, with the banks. It's important also to link better what we do in terms of research to the private sector, but also to the bankability of SMEs. Um, I just had a discussion a few hours ago with Kole Asepe on SME integration in value chains, and it's clear research, innovation, universities have an in 
important role to play to link farmers to the markets, but also to the innovative ideas which can become marketable. And within this context, the digital agenda becomes key because what COVID also showed is that we can reduce the length of the value chain, focus more on um, local supply chains, and also where digital e-commerce applications can also um, enhance in terms of market transparency and reduce inequities in the value chain. So my plea to you is that you get in touch with our delegations. We are in the final stage of our pre-programming to put the issues that we are discussing in terms of research applications at the core of the country prioritization so that what we have experienced in the last months can actually be in anticipatory action for the next programming period so that a resilient agri-food system, which is inclusive, which is equitable, which gives importance and signals to the young people from secondary, post-secondary to university and post-doctoral, but also has a gender mainstreaming where women and research can actually be given the right signals and uh, there is a true transformation process. The European Union and the member states are there to accompany you and we are prepared and ready to, to take over the challenges of the post-COVID recovery. Over to you, Godfrey. Thank you so much, uh, Renat, uh, for your remarks and assuring uh, us of the support from the European Commission. Um, you emphasized the, uh, the wake up call as a result of the COVID-19. Of course, as we know, that is uh, uh, on top of the previous shocks to our agricultural sector, including the fall army worm and the desert locusts. Um, you called upon African European universities to be involved in anticipatory research um, so that we are, not, we are not taken unawares by these different shocks, uh, including, I, I may add, uh, the you know, involvement in the formulation of early warning, early warning uh, systems. We appreciate the EU support to various agriculture value chains in, in West Africa. And we take note of your strong call for um, taking a holistic approach to um, the development of agri-food systems, uh, including research, and especially in the build up to the UN uh, Food Systems Summit in 2021. Uh, we also take note of your call to um, collate and put together uh, success stories across the continent uh, that can be scaled up or that can be learned from uh, whether it is on pest and disease control, water management, mechanization, digitalization, and so on. Uh, and also your last call for the Rural Forum Network to get in touch with the various uh, EU missions with regard to programming under the, the, the Green Deal. So thank you so much, uh, uh, Leonard. We appreciate your interventions and, um, and remarks. So at this point, allow me to invite the, the fifth uh, panelist, who is Honorable Lobin Lowy, the Minister of Agriculture of the Republic of Malawi. Honorable Minister, you are welcome, and you may make your remarks now. Honorable Minister, you two have 10 minutes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Godfrey, uh, the Director of Agriculture, African Union uh, Commission, Honorable Ministers, uh, my fellow panelists, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I am Erika Maganga, the P, uh, Principal Secretary for Minister of Agriculture. I'll be speaking on behalf of uh, Honorable Robin Lowe, the Minister of Agriculture, who wished to have attended uh, this meeting, but is attending parliament. And today is the first day of parliament for the new government. So you could not miss it. I pass my appreciation to the forum for considering Malawi to participate in this uh, webinar. Thank you, Reforum. Allow me to start by appreciating the African, the European Union through its Commission for Supporting Malawi 
in its response to addressing food, nutrition, and sustainable agriculture challenges in Malawi. European Union is one of the Malawi's great supporters of food, nutrition, security, and sustainable agriculture. For the period 2014-2020, which is, which is uh, indicative of what has happened in the past, the European Commission through Director, Directorate General of International uh, Cooperation and Development provided uh, 250 uh, million euro for sustainable agriculture only of uh, Malawi's national indicative uh, program. It was about 45% of the Malawi's indicative program. An indication of how EU values Malawi's agriculture. This was provided to enhance food and nutrition security and promote sustainable agriculture growth and incomes in Malawi. Malawi has also benefited from the EU Global Climate Change Alliance, receiving 8 million euros. Further, Malawi has also benefited from the Desera project, innovation for farmers in Malawi, amounting to 6.3 uh, million uh, euros to mention but a few. COVID-19 has dis disrupted Malawi's day-to-day -day work like any other country. However, the government has tried to put in place measures to reduce the impact. For example, government of Malawi allocated 20 million US dollars in spending on health care and targeted social assistance programs. This includes hiring of 2,000 additional health workers purchasing of PPEs and additional medicines, and in additional tax waivers will be granted to imports of essential goods uh, to manage and contain the pandemic. Government of Malawi also mobilized additional support from African Development Bank and the World Bank to support COVID-19 response in Malawi. The European Union also provided 800,000 uh, euro through the World Food Programme to provide food assistance to the most food insecure refugees and asylum seekers in Malawi, who have been particularly hit by the economic consequences of COVID-19. Malawi univers Malawian universities are also helping in responding to COVID-19 through the following. Development of digital fabrication capabilities in Malawi to support the production of urgently needed face masks and face shields, a collaboration between the University of Malawi and Cambridge University. With support from the Wellcome Trust through the Malawi Liverpool Wellcome uh, Program, University of Malawi's College of Medicine in partnership with the University of Liverpool and Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine, constructed an oxygen manufacturing plant in Malawi as part of COVID-19 uh, response. Researchers from universities have provided analytical opinions to guide government of Malawi's uh, response to COVID-19. Before COVID-19 came, climate change and its impact was already devastating Malawian agriculture, food and nutritional security. However, the government was and is still addressing uh, these. Uh, we through its Department of Agricultural Research Services, does implements the following activities to address climate change and the food, nutrition, and sustainable agriculture. Breeding of high yield and adapt ad adaptability for all major crops, development of improved area-specific agronomic recommendations, development of alternative soil fertility management technologies, evaluation of small-scale farm mechanization and labor-saving technologies, identification of small-scale agro-processing and value addition technologies, development of irrigation and water management technologies for small-scale irrigation farmers, such as the Shire Valley Irrigation Project, research into integrated pest and disease management, evaluating alternative feeds and management systems for livestock develop production, development technologies for storage uh, pest uh, management, and value chain development to enable farmers access to credit to develop agricultural processing and production technologies. 300 production alliances and 100,000 farmer households in, year, in five years uh, since uh, 2018. 
Other development partners are also supporting climate change adaptation and mitigation in agriculture in Malawi, such as Action Aid, UNDP, FAO, among other actors with specific uh, projects. Lilongo University of Agriculture and Natural Resources is leading research in agricultural and natural resources uh, through the World Bank Center of Excellence in fisheries and aquaculture, aflatoxin and food safety research and climate sciences. Last but not least, allow me to mention that Ruforum has supported Malawian universities to support to food, nutrition, and sustainable agriculture challenges in Malawi. Malawi Forum, Ruforum has played a significant role in mobilizing universities to transform Malawi's food, nutrition, and sustainable agriculture. Reforum has supported Malawian universities with funding worth $1.3 million in research grants since 2004. Research has generated technologies and innovations in the areas of fish breeding, fish feeds, uh, market development, dairy production, goat production, irrigation technology development, and cassava uh, value chain. Reforum supported uh, development of PhD programs in aquaculture and fisheries and natural resources economics at Lilongwe University of Agriculture and Natural Resources, Luana, which is supporting training of Malawian and other African students. They lead research and innovation in fisheries and aquaculture in Malawi. Reforum has also supported training of human resource at master's and PhD level for transformation of Malawi's agricultural sector. To date, 110 of which 70 are male and 40 female students, including 43 PhDs and 58 masters and nine BSCs have been trained. Reforum has also supported Malawian universities in mob to mobilize 6.5 million US dollars for research and graduate training in aquaculture and fisheries and $6.9 million for masters and PhD in agricultural sciences. Malawi government prayers to African Union Commission and European Union include Reforum as an umbrella organization of African universities in implementation of EU, AU, food and nutrition security roadmap, including funding protocols, but also to expand research support to address challenges confronting food and nutrition security issues, including climate change and management of transboundary livestock and crop pests and diseases. Also to support establishment of agricultural science, technology, and innovation indicator platform to track, to track investments in agricultural and development in Africa, to support towards skills development, including in digital technologies to respond to emerging skills, needs, and advancement uh, technology. And for the African Union Commission to lobby the World Bank, African Development Bank, amongst others, to support implementation of the five continental initiatives agreed by African ministers in December 2019 in Cape Coast, Ghana, including one on strengthening higher agricultural education in Africa and increasing the pool of scientists in African universities and research institutions. I thank you all the panelists and the forum for organizing a webinar. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Maganga. Uh, for representing Honorable Lobin Lowe, the Minister of Agriculture for, for Malawi. Uh, we do appreciate your, your interventions uh, with regard to um, agro transformation in the country and your recognition of the support that the European Commission has provided to Malawi, both in the short term to support the vulnerable, but also the long-term um, interventions, your appreciation of the research uh, from universities in Malawi that provide guidance to the government of Malawi, the various interventions by the government uh, with the support from partners in irrigation, mechanization, pest and disease control, climate change and mitigation, and aflatoxin control, among others, and also your appreciation of uh, Roof Forum the support that it has provided since 2004 in the different areas in research and also in capacity building through training of masters and PhD students. And finally, you called upon the AUC um, to support the ministerial outcomes 
from uh, um, 2019 uh, in Ghana. So thank you so much for, for your intervention. We, we appreciate uh, your interventions uh, very much. The sixth uh, panelist is Professor Hama Hamadi Idi Boga, who is the principal secretary of the State Department for Agricultural Research in the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock and Fisheries of the Republic of Kenya. Professor, you have the floor and 10 minutes. Over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, all uh, protocols observed. My internet is having problems. I have been listening keenly to the speakers. I hope you can hear me, but there have been some interruptions. So I hope uh, everybody can hear me. We can hear you loud and clear, Professor. Okay. Uh, I don't, I, 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 let me start by thanking the organizers and Roof Forum for bringing us together to have this uh, conversation on policy and research and universities. I am a Ruforum grantee myself from the year 2004, uh, 2005, 2006 there, while I, I, I was at Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. So I appreciate the work of Ruforum and, and a salute to my senior, Professor Adipala, for the good work he's doing. I know we have been engaging at Igaton with the Ruforum uh, programs there have been very supportive and will continue to support. I come from the academic world and I know how hard it is to peep into the policy world. It's like these two worlds struggle to meet but they really never do. So when I came into the ministry as the PS in charge of agricultural research, I was really, really uh, excited because I thought this is a good opportunity to now bring it all together. And uh, we set out to review the National Agricultural Research Systems Policy to make sure that that happens. And uh, we were doing it together with the universities and the, 20, and the 15 or 20 CG centers that are in the country, because we were excited that we could uh, have this opportunity to engage. But I realized also very quickly that uh, Although there is a lot of potential and capacity in universities to assist government work, it's not really institutionalized. And sometimes it happens on an ad hoc basis. Individual consultants are very busy and they're able to come through somehow through the bidding process. But I think because these are government institutions, they ought to, we ought to have a more structured way of uh, leveraging the expertise in the universities. Uh, right now in the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, we have quite a number of programs where we have deliberately involved the universities, including in the Kenya Climate Smart Agriculture Project, where universities and research institutions have a whole component to themselves. It's funded by World Bank, which has a uh, also aspects of capacity building, PhD, postdoc, and MSc. But uh, generally, the, 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 the interaction and the engagement depends on who is sitting in the office. There is no structured way. We have attempted in the ministry now to sign an MOU with the four of the big agricultural universities so that we can pick issues that are of importance to the country like the Galana Kulalu Food Security Project, where we brought in the university after the project ran into problems, we really brought in the universities to look at the whole design and advise accordingly, and they did a good job. We have also involved the university in the restructuring of our strategic food reserves and the NCPB and uh, contributed to change in policy in those areas. So we've been really engaging in the, our universities, but it depends and I would desire for a more structured engagement of, uh, of our universities. I see more engagements of independent consultants and firms like uh, McKinsey and others, uh, where even the universities have the capacity to, to engage us. 
with regards to the programs of the EU in the, in, the, in, the, in the country, we have quite a number of programs funded by EU. Most of them are geared towards the crop sector, supporting uh, smallholder farmers. We also, and one of the innovations that came through the support of the EU is the e-voucher system, which we, has replaced the, the farmers fertilizer subsidy program where we were buying bulk fertilizer and distributing to farmers. And it was quite wasteful and full of corruption and wastage. So now we have an elegant system of e-voucher where we just put money in the, in the bank and uh, the farmer goes to the agrovet and they're able to get their input. This is, came through EFAT, through funding also from EU. And as part of the COVID response, the EU increased the allocation to this so that in the short range, again, we will have uh, farmers supported through that program. But of course, the other programs on biodiversity, especially in Apatana, where there is a catchment protection to make sure that uh, we don't lose our soil and our biodiversity. There are programs on blue economy and uh, supported in the fisheries sector through the EU. And I'm sure other sectors within the government, they, they, they interact, especially the education sector. And we are appreciative. Now, the other thing that uh, we, 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 we did in response to the issue of COVID is that uh, we created what we called a food security war room because we realized very quickly that the COVID uh, pandemic was not going to be a health problem only. It was going to be majorly also a food security problem, especially in urban settlements. And uh, we quickly formed a food security war room to look at the issues. How will the vulnerable get food? Because many people were losing their jobs. And we use cash transfers, mobile cash transfers, to reach the vulnerable, giving them 200, 2,000 shillings every two weeks to take care of their needs. In the past, we would have moved food there, which was problematic in a pandemic situation. But digital solution provided a way out. And this has been adopted as a way forward in future because of the M-Pesa solution that is widely applied here in Kenya. But by and large, we said food production must go on, food distribution must go on, food processing must go on, and uh, also locust control must go on. So the food security war room put in place guidelines for the, all the players in the food value chain to make sure that nothing was interrupted and all stakeholders, the private sector, development partners, the ministry, the county governments were in this together and we were able to, to, pull it, uh, to pull it through, including the distribution of inputs to farmers. Farming had to go on. And up to now, farming is good. We had a good bumper harvest. The pandemic is going on, but also other activities in the agriculture sector have not been interrupted. Now, uh, alongside, why, because we were dealing with do, two disasters, uh, of uh, locusts and of COVID. The locusts, we really worked very well with FAO and uh, DLCO. This is the Desert Locust Control Organization. And, and the EU also funded uh, FAO to help us uh, with the locust uh, problem. And uh, 27 counties out of 45 were infested with locusts. Right now, we have fought the war for the last uh, six months, since December up to now. Oh, nine months, actually. And uh, we have reduced the infestation to about three counties. We are thinking the war will go on up to December because uh, there are certain parts, because of too much rain, where the locusts have refused to move. But we use the opportunity also to learn a lot about locusts. We involved the universities. We involved the interns from the universities because this is a once in a lifetime opportunity and we wanted to bring in new people to understand the phenomena so that in future we could have the people to, to tackle it. Otherwise, I think uh, coming back to the research theme, I think there is still more that can be done. And uh, organizations like Rufora Maki as lobbying policymakers to make sure that they don't forget research 
but we need more national lobby for, for researchers. They are too silent, and so it, uh, it is not prioritized in funding, and uh, probably it's also not understood because the, the benefits are not immediate. And so what I would like to see is whether the forum can also design a way in which it can have partners not just the universities as partners, but institutions like Ruforum, but which are within the countries lobbying, the way you would have DAD, the way you would have uh, uh, other lobbies, uh, DADs for Germany, so that they can keep the research agenda on top of the topics. Sometimes when there are too many problems, uh, research is easily forgotten and the universities are easily forgotten. The other thing is managing the research management systems. Most African countries, the research management system are weak. So they are not able to sustain, they are not able to process, they are not able to direct, they are not able to come up with research agendas that are uh, properly crafted. And uh, in Kenya, we have been struggling with that. And uh, we have crafted an agricultural research agenda, and we have also crafted a national research agenda. But I think there is a lot that we can still do with restructuring the research management system, because that is what will enable policymakers, universities, and other research institutions to link uh, properly and to contribute to national and uh, international issues that uh, keep on emerging. Thank you very much. And uh, my apologies from my cabinet secretary who, who could not join this meeting, and therefore I came to represent him. Otherwise, the uh, best regards to the forum and the colleagues here. <clears throat> Thank you so much, uh, Professor Professor Boga, for your for your remarks. Um, appreciating in particular, and I liked this very much, the struggle that exists between um, research and the and the policy world. Uh, it's not only easy. Anybody that has been there understands that it's not easy to translate research into policy outcomes mm -hmm. uh, and calling upon the I'm need to get uh, Professor, if you can mute yourself, that would be great. Okay. Um, you called upon the need to have a, a, a well-structured relationship between government and universities, but also appreciating the role of universities that they have played in Kenya in restructuring some of the different government programs. Also your appreciation of the EU support to different programs, um, and in particular the e-voucher program for fertilizer distribution, and also biodiversity um, uh, through catchment protection, as well as the blue economy, especially in the area of fisheries. Uh, you also talked about the different uh, response measures by government to COVID-19 uh, to make sure that food production, food distribution, farmer support, that, um, and also the locust control are not disrupted during this, uh, the, this pandemic. And you called um, on reform to uh, be involved in, stre in strengthening uh, the lobbying capacity at national level um, for governments to pay attention to, to research, noting that because we don't see immediate outcomes, that support doesn't come um, so quickly. So thank you so much, uh, Professor Boga, for your intervention and contribution to this uh, webinar. Now we have finished the interventions from the six uh, panelists. We now go to uh, Dr. Patrick Okori, who is a principal scientist and uh, country representative of IRCRISAT in uh, Malawi. Uh, Patrick, you have the floor and you have 12 minutes. Over to you. Thank you very much, moderator. Um, ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, all protocol observed. Um, I'm very grateful to Ruforum for giving me an opportunity to share some thoughts. I was listening carefully to the many things that have been said and the moderator has done a good job in summarizing them. I picked roughly eight of them that I think are critical for this conversation. The first one 
is that policy, it was really focusing on policy information review and learning and looking at the CADAP and other frameworks and how universities could play some role there. The next were a series of things talking about the threats to our economy, most of them looking at emergent and future biophysical environment and economic threats among others going under different names, COVID, locusts, et cetera. There were issues of food and nutrition security. There was the issue of regional integration of food markets uh, and most importantly, thinking about agri-food system perspectives. There was a question of having a more holistic, I would call it ecosystem way of framing our farm to the fork way of looking at business. And then there's a the whole thing about the response and planning for disasters. And they have had many cases, most of them rotating around COVID from Liberia, from Kenya, from Malawi, and, and even South Africa, including the threats by, by, by the environment, climate change, et cetera. And then there was this issue of leveraging on various policy and biophysical research in the continent. There were many examples that were given, working both with African and with EU, looking at the ZERA, among others. The whole thing about how to manage, prioritize, design, and implement different activities in the continent, I think that was raised, but mostly coming from a country perspective. And then everybody was very grateful for the EU support, for forum support, from African Union support. So these are about eight things I picked, but definitely they said more than that. And I'm grateful for all the, all the panelists, your excellencies and, and honorable members for what you have said. I'll focus my discussion on three broad areas. The first is really the economic environment, which is informing uh, an intensified role of African universities to support agriculture transformation and to help develop resilience mechanisms to weather the storm that's ahead of us. I'm sure you are all aware that we, we had quite a good uh, wind blowing for Africa. The economy from 2000 grew fairly steadily up to about 2.5%, uh, I mean 5%. But that has been uh, uh, threatened by many things. Within this period, the good story was that we diversified our trade, for example, from 276 billion to more than 806 billion. But most of these were with emerging economies, China, India, for example. The main problem was that while we expanded our trade relationship with these new partners, most of it remained in the primary product area. It did not really diversify the export basket. The other issue that is related to what you're hearing is that uh, Africa has been urbanizing steadily from about 42% in 18, 2018, and is expected to reach 50% by 2035. Over the 1.8 or 2 billion people in Africa at that time will be living in town. That has implications for our agri-food system. We must start thinking carefully of how we can transition, how we produce food, how we add value to it in a sustainable manner. And then there is the whole question that we have also seen within this period of a huge technological change and digitization. Africa has more than close to 300 million mobile phone users. This, as you have already heard, could help to shorten the value chains and improve the, the functionality, especially from the rural to urban settings. We heard a little bit about the mobile phone, uh, the M-Pesa case from Kenya. There is the ever-present threat of climate change. 27 out of 33 countries in Africa, in, in the world, remain vulnerable. So we, we cut a huge chunk of that. And yet, we also know that if we don't do something about it, we are going to lose up to 34% of our crop yield. So the food security threats that were mentioned by the Honorable Minister from South Africa will become very real as we go into the future. We are also still expanding. 60% of the world's young people will be in Africa by 2050. Is that a threat or a dividend? Anyway, this dark cloud has, I mean, this positive mixed bag has some dark cloud that has risen of late. We all now know that we may not be able to achieve at the current rate, the AU Agenda 2063 target because our continent is growing at just Yes, just over 4%, we need 7%, which is the target if we are going to meet the 2063 targets. The main headwinds that are going to aff affecting this further is COVID, you have had. Africa in 2020 is going to have its first recession. 
with the, the economy contracting from between two to five percent. The trouble is agriculture, which employs most of our people, is actually not been growing much. The total factor productivity for the last 40 years is less than 1%. And this is a major threat to how we do business. The silver lining, as was mentioned by the moderator, is that we have lots of policy frameworks and other discussions. There is the STISA, there is the CADAP, there are all these new EU frameworks. All Everybody, we have the frameworks to support that to happen. I think the key question is, how can we get agriculture which has a very primal role to do this. We know that if agriculture can grow by 5% per decade, it, has, it can more than two to four times move people out of poverty. The trouble is still the yield gap. Most of our crops are over 50%. Access to and deployment of relevant technology is an issue. The positive thing, however, is that there are technologies now. There is reform in the national research systems. We are moving away from individual research st uh, stations to more national research systems. And this is happening across the board. The full-time equivalent of scientists, scientists for agriculture population is also improving. And there are many agriculture universities that have come all over Africa over the last two decades at least. So these are positive things. I think the key question that one wants to ask is, how do we frame all of this to contribute to, towards a food, nutrition, and sustainable agriculture roadmap that has been generated by the EU as well as CADAP and others. Again, you have heard, I think the African universities have a pivotal role to play in supporting policy. Africa needs to deploy its academia and similar institutions to generate evidence, design, and influence. I'll give just two examples. In Uganda, and I'm talking about my alma mater, Makere, there is the Economic Policy Research Center. It's a think tank that can contribute and contribute significantly. There is a Tegemeo uh, Institute in, in, at, at Edgerton where Professor Boga is, is from, was from, I mean, in Kenya, where he's from. All these are playing a significant role and we could leverage on such models. These are, by the way, all member universities of Rufora. So there is capacity for African universities to become think tank. The second issue is the whole area of moving into a green economy. There is general convergence on what it entails, but it is very comp complicated because issues like fostering economic growth and development, addressing agricultural productivity, community resilience, sustainable natural resource or asset use, promoting sustainable infrastructure and environmental services require us to go beyond our traditional thinking of tons per hectare. We need to think about multi-macro, let me use that language, system of, of looking at investments. Then there is the thing about inclusive growth and job creation. If we are going to address the question of our youth bulge, we must make sure that over half of Africa's labor force in agriculture is actually inclusively engaged. COVID is going to affect women more than and other care, caregivers more than anybody else, as all the evidence is already showing, both in urban and rural areas and we must make sure there's inclusive growth. Universities have a role to proactively support government design policies that make that happen. And finally, it's the whole thing about continental peer review and learning for scaling out. Again, the example was given by, by, by the moderator, how universities could support the CADA process. They played a role, for example, in helping the CADA compact process earlier on. I think they can still play a role in helping uh, inform how governments can, can create wealth, address food security, and inclusive growth, among others. Finally, we need to think about the mechanisms to put in place to engage African universities and non-research actors. I want to throw one or two ideas. The first is that we need to think about a regional cooperation. The problems we are talking about uh, go beyond borders, and Africa has a long history for addressing its challenges working regionally and across. In fact, the African Union uh, is, is a, came from the Organization of African Unity because of that. And so um, uh, areas around higher education, Ruforum is best, best place to do that. It has the right membership. It can train for the region. We know that almost 190% of their graduates return to their countries. The areas of biosurveillance, universities are well equipped 
to address this kind of issues, especially focusing on the one world, one world, one health system, which is what we need to think about as we diminish the connection between human beings and the world. And then nature's, nature's capital and creative employment, thinking about how we link the wild, um, the, the natural resources and, 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 and creative employment and trade are issues we need to think about. And finally, I still think that at a national level, while we can generate the so-called regional public goods working collectively, there needs to be convergence at a national level. And the examples that have been given today for technical support for domestication of critical policies like the Malabo Declaration and several such things require that we work both at a regional and a national level and Roof Forum and its members are very well placed to help in coordination, intellectual support and research to delivery. Thank you very much, moderator. Over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Patrick. Um, quite a nice, uh, a nice reflection on the issues that were raised by um, by the different uh, panelists and your own uh, thoughts and take about um, about them. Um, in particular, um, you called up upon um, the need to um, strengthen the role of national think tanks. Uh, and you gave examples of um, EPRC in Uganda, Tegemeo in Kenya, and I think these are important uh, are important players in the in the national effort. But um, uh, some of them directly linked to universities, others a, a little bit autonomous. Um, you also stated that um, different policy frameworks exist on the continent, uh, but the challenge is uh, their implementation or the quality of the implementation to achieve the stated objectives. Uh, the need for uh, strengthening continental peer review, and you mentioned the, especially the Kadabanyu review process and the role or involvement of uh, universities. And you also uh, called on two approaches for strengthening the role of universities in um, policy processes through regional cooperation and collaboration as well as uh, strengthening collaboration of universities at national level. Thank you so much for your reflection um, as a discussant on what was uh, uh, put forward by the different uh, uh, moderators. So um, excellencies, honorable ministers, colleagues, we have come to the end of, the of part three of our webinar. And now we are going to the fourth part, um, which is basically uh, hearing from, from you, the participants. Uh, we have a Q&A session now. And as I guided before, if you would like to make a comment or ask a question, um, you put up your hand and then I will recognize you. Uh, it would be appreciated if you can um, uh, state to whom your question is, is directed uh, so, that, so that the panelists can respond um, accordingly. And with that, I see I already have uh, five hands up. Um, and please keep it very short. Um, it's not necessary to give background information to your question. Simply shoot the question directly to save time but also that will give an opportunity to, uh, to have as many interventions, uh, remarks and comments uh, um, as possible. And now I would like to recognize George Kanyama Piri. Um, go, go ahead. George Kanyama Piri, you have the floor. Maybe you are muted. Okay. If uh, if George is unable to come in, I can recognize now Mick Mick Mwala. Mick Mwala, make your intervention. Mick. Hello. Yes. yes. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay, George. Okay. Now now back to George. Uh, George. Okay. Yes. 
George, we can hear you. Go ahead. No, no that's Mick. Mick, hold on. I'll come back to you because George did respond to my to my call. So now the floor is for George Kanyama. Okay. It, it connectivity challenges. I now recognize Mick. Mick, go ahead. Yes, again, uh, my name is uh, Mick Mwala. I'm from uh, University of Zambia in Osaka. And uh, I will, I will I'll make a comment. Uh, it may appear like a question, that's fine. But I think uh, uh, following on some interventions on the, from the chat, I, not, I noted uh, Samuel intervention that we have a lot of uh, um, frameworks, a lot of policies, a lot of inf uh, uh, structures and other things that the Forum and other uh, 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 organizations have been trying to build. But what, I, what I miss, uh, especially that we, we were blessed to have had uh, uh, our, 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 our leaders, the, you know, the ministers, uh, talking to us is a, a, a full uh, commitment in terms of uh, uh, what do they have on the ground? I mean, um, maybe it's not a fair question, but it's uh, from, the, from the interventions, it's the program that they have on the ground here that I, but uh, when you actually go to the, into the, into the you, you don't find, that support that you you would want, and I mean, at a national, if one is in a public universities, you do see this, and the the peers from from uh, from uh, 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 Kenya, I think uh, Professor Boga, I think he alluded to this aspect, uh, you know, that there's a there's there's a gap, you know. So my my, my comment really is that. Uh, we, there is a need for us to uh, uh, to have some ownership, uh, some definite stance uh, from our leaders uh, beyond the very good, uh, uh, you know, encouraging ways that they they give us. That's Thank my you, comment. Mick. Thank you for your comment, Mick. Merci uh, pour votre now comment. I recognize Mark Anthony Onyema. Je reconnais uh, Mark Anthony. Mark Anthony. Okay, uh, Mark is, have, is probably having challenges. I now recognize uh, Dexu Gobnu. Dexu Gobnu, you have the floor. Please keep it short. Um, Dexu seems to be having also challenges. Um, I have, I can see a hand from the University of Gezira. Somebody from the University of Gezira. Can you make your comment or, or ask your question? Uh, you need to mute your. Do uh, you need to unmute yourself to be able to talk? Can you hear me, please? Yes, uh, University of Gezira. Um, yes, yes, I'm Professor Muhammad Taha from University of Gezira. Okay, go ahead. Okay, thank you very much for providing me this opportunity. Uh, good, very good morning, everybody. Good morning, ministers, uh, distinguished guests, and uh, good morning, colleagues. Good afternoon, colleagues representing different universities, African universities. Uh, it is my pleasure, in fact, to participate in the reform uh, we, uh, webinar series of two, uh, 220 concerning engagement, engaging African universities in advancing agriculture, food, and nutrition security in Africa. In fact, in Sudan, after the success of our glorious uh, revolution, which raised the slogans of freedom, peace, and justice, people of Sudan agreed upon a transitional period of three years to accomplish the transition objectives 
with setting bees in all parts of the country, fighting against corruption, looking towards corruption-free country, and to roadmap the entire economy towards solving the problems facing the community in the field of health, education, settlement of people in the places of suffering uh, from wars in Darfur and other remote uh, parts of the country, besides being ready for crisis management such as COVID-19 and flooding. Al Jazeera University is located in the center of the Sudan, where the biggest. What is your question? What is your question? Uh, yes. Now I, 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 your question? Have, I would like to have some information about the University of Jazeera. No, 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 we don't have. Uh, if everybody does that, we, are, we shall yeah. not. Please go to your comment or question. Uh, I, 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 I want just to get it short. Uh, in fact, uh, our university can contribute. Uh, uh, in, in research, in uh, policy making, in uh, uh, strategies to display science, the technology, innovation towards food security and transformation in the whole life of the people in the Sudan. Uh, we would like uh, to have some uh, uh, help uh, in, in providing such uh, uh, help towards the, our community. And we have, uh, in fact, uh, so many research uh, uh, projects which can be submitted to the forum to be uh, financed concerning the studies of the impact of climate change in the, in the yield of uh, field crops and the rain-fed agriculture in Sudan, improving vegetable export uh, to Europe from irrigated schemes uh, in the Sudan in the era of the COVID-19. And I think this will be uh, very much interested for the uh, people in the Europe and people in Sudan because we have so many uh, facilities to provide food for uh, the country, food for the Africa, and food also for the Europe. Uh, we need a lot of help, in fact, to reestablish the activities of the uh, uh, Jazeera scheme, which is the biggest scheme in the world. It is uh, of the it is located in the center of Sudan, it is, and it, is, it have two, uh, two million and 20,000 uh, feddans, and now we are ready really to establish work, and, and, and we can provide really food for Africa and food for the Europe, and we need a lot of help, uh, help really to reestablish uh, the activities of growing different crops towards the export to other countries. Uh, thank you very much. For thank you, Mohamed. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, now, I, I recognize um, Srinivasa. Srinivasa? Yeah. Is there any project on uh, linking of all water bodies of Africa for proper distribution of water for all? to combat uh, desertification and also to combat floods? This is Thank the question. Uh, uh, I, I want uh, Professor uh, Boga to respond to this question. Thank you so much for being specific uh, to uh, Professor Boga. Yeah, this is a um, uh, principal scientist at Dayland Agriculture, Agriculture University, India. Thank you so much, uh, Srinivasa. Yeah. Uh, now I recognize uh, Matthias Fonte. Hello. <clears throat> Good morning from Cameroon. I want to appreciate uh, the presentation by Professor Hamadi. Uh, we want to, how do we engage African universities in advancing agriculture? Uh, a professor now in policy making who recognizes that there is very little linkage, but I think he made some uh, important uh, uh, contributions where I think we can upscale that uh, universities or they should uh, have uh, established MOUs with ministries that will get the help. And uh, there's also the need that we should, I'm suggesting that we should create a national uh, reforum at a national level we recognize that the reforum is very active at the continental level. I think it's reform policy that uh, national units or structures should be created at sub-regional and national levels to, so that they can leverage uh, the expertise from universities and also act as a, a stronger lobby. So I think that's a, an important uh, 
outcome that should come from this uh, webinar to encourage uh, nations, member states of the forum, go ahead and create national platforms so that they can engage with policymakers and also lead to creating MOUs such that uh, African universities can engage with them and contribute effectively in uh, uh, ensuring nutrition and food security in Africa. Thank you, Mathias Fonte. Uh, the next hand is uh, Patience Chindong. Patience, you have your floor. Patience, are you there? Can you, I mean, you may unmute yourself. Okay. Yeah, if yeah, yeah. yeah, no, I'm here. I'm here, please. Okay, go ahead, patience. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for organizing this uh, uh, amazing and inspiring discussion. My question is, rapid dig digitalization is a way forward in transforming agriculture in Africa. So what are the African panelists, so those from different African countries, what are they doing to improve on policy that target this? Because I think this is a wonderful opportunity, especially with the coming of COVID-19 for us to do business in a different way and to get on the same footing like EUs. So what are they doing to improve on policy and also involving youth in this uh, digital world of today? Thank you, that's my question. Thank you so much, uh, <clears throat> Patience. The next hand that I have is uh, Richard Ouma. Yes, this is Richard from Uganda. I'm looking at the issues of uh, risk management and safety. I was just looking at, uh, from the point of view of the different African governments, what efforts are they taking to involve acad academics in issues of risk management and safety in agriculture, as a development of frameworks and evolving them to come together with the, the policy related uh, policy makers to put into place issues or frameworks for risk management. Because we have seen this problem, especially when the COVID aspect came in, we were just taken by surprise. So famine is coming up in several countries. Uh, there are there specific mechanisms that governments are taking to involve academics in the process of developing risk management and safety frameworks for promotion of agricultural production. Thank you, Richard. The next hand I have is Badir Aldein Kara. Badir. Badir. Okay, Badir is having a challenge uh, to connect. I now recognize Ali Mahamani. Uh, <clears throat> Badir, you seem to be having um, a poor connection, so we cannot hear you. Maybe you can try to get a better connection and we'll give you a chance later. Uh, but for now, I recognize Ali Mahamani. Ali? Uh, Ali? Hello? Yes, Ali, go ahead. Oui, uh... Go ahead, Ali. Ali, you seem to have a connection challenge. Hello? Yes? Okay. Uh, Ali is having a connection challenge. Now I recognize Maud Kamatenesi Mujisha. Thank you very much. I hope I'm being heard. Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. I am Professor Maud Kamatenesi Mujisha, Vice Chancellor at Bishop Stuart University and a member of the forum. I would like to say this is very good for the forum and we are very grateful. However, my comment goes to, I am a researcher in nutritional medicinal plants. There are new crops that need recognition and are put on the list 
of the food crops that can be domesticated across Africa. And right now they are being put in medicine, but the truth of the matter, they are foods. A plant, for example, like Moringa, it is a food. And it is not recognized. We have several plants like Venonia amagdalina, which is a vegetable in other countries are eaten, but we seem not to take them on. Mm -hmm. And I think it is high time we do that. Thank you very much. Thank you for being short and very specific. I now recognize Mahamadu Muhammadu. Mahamadu. Yes, uh, good afternoon. I hope I can be here loud and clear also. Yes. Yeah, I just uh, want to thank the presenters on uh, behalf of uh, myself and my country. I'm from Niger Republic. And uh, I'm a student in MSc Geology in uh, Andhra University in India. I recently finished my master's. But I, I just want to recommend the Roof Forum to expand much more universities, not only to uh, return them to East, uh, Eastern Africa, and also to provide also other opportunities for other regions of African uh, uh, citizens to, to benefit from uh, the different uh, offers like scholarship and other sorts of things. So that's uh, all what I want to say. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Now I recognize Johnson Masaka. Johnson? Johnson, are you there? Okay, Johnson may be having a connection challenge. I now recognize Stema Ndala. Hi, good afternoon, I hope you can hear me. Yes, Stema, we can hear you. Good, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm talking here in my private capacity as a private consultant. I'm also the, the executive member of the International Agrogeology Association that is stationed in Canada, but having 100% of its operations in Africa. So uh, my input here, and it's a general input, is to say probably we need to reset the Africa policy perspective, especially as it pertains to agriculture. I think that some of our fundamentals are wrong. Um, and that we really, really need to reset ourselves. I'm making an example here. If you look at Uganda uh, and also Kenya and Tanzania, they've got tremendous deposits of phosphate. And not, there's never been a focus on actually benefit, beneficiating those phosphates and assisting the agricultural sector from internal. And if they were to do that, what would happen is that there's going to be a lot of job creation from the, the, the development of the fertilizer itself. Just before we start distributing and giving people vouchers, we'll be giving people vouchers based on the fertilizer that we have manufactured locally. And I think we are losing a lot of opportunities there. I think we, every time we talk about accelerating agriculture in Africa, it's more accelerating a car that has taken off very wrongly. And I think Africa must reset. We must look at sustain, sustainability from within and then we move from there. That's my input. Thank you. Thank you, Stema. Um, I, will only, I will only take three more, and that's it. So three more um, interventions, because we are beginning to, uh, to get short of time. So I'll take three more, and then uh, that will be it. I have uh, Leonel Chizungu from DRC. Leonel, you have the floor. Leon, Leon Chizungu. Oui, allô, je vous écoute. Je parle français, je suis en RDC, oui. Yes, go ahead, uh, Yon. Oui. Allez-y. Bonjour, je parle français, je suis en RDC, je vous écoute bien, oui. Allô? 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 Yes, go ahead, Lyon. 
Oui, alors bonjour. J ai, j ai Allez-y. Oui, merci beaucoup. Euh, juste, je j'aimerais partager aussi mon expérience par rapport à ça. Moi, je suis Léon Chiton, je suis un RDC, comme je le disais. Euh, je suis membre et responsable d'un consortium des organisations qui travaillent sur les ODT. Et notamment, nous sommes focalisés dans la sécurité alimentaire. Euh, nous mettons en place une approche permaculture euh, que nous appelons donc l'agriculture permanente. Et donc, à travers euh, ce que nous faisons ici, nous avons à côté même un centre agroécologique. Nous avons compris l'importance de l'exposer des experts. Euh, même avec, nous collaborons avec des, des universités ici, par exemple l'ISGA, l'ICB, l'IEA, l'IOB. Euh, C'est-à-dire que c'est avec lequel nous, nous collaborons dans nos activités. Ce qui concerne donc les recherches euh, sur la sécurité alimentaire, mais aussi avec le centre-là, nous mettons en place des petits projets pour la formation des femmes, des filles, des garçons, tant à ce qui concerne donc les choses sur l'agriculture, mais aussi euh, par rapport à ce qui concerne l'agroécologie, sur ce qui concerne l'environnement. Euh, C'est vrai que nous connaissons un problème actuellement avec la présence du euh, Covid, mais on continue yes. toujours à lutter à faire quelque chose par rapport à ça. Nous avions voulu que nous. Lyon, what is your what is your comment or question? Because we, uh, please ouais. be specific. Ok, c'est-à-dire uh, ma question, question or a comment and keep it short. Ok, ma question c'est euh, juste savoir comment euh, ces réseaux pourra aussi nous intégrer euh, pour que nous, nous soyons dans, dans, dans ces réseaux ou bien nous soyons dans les plateformes. En aide de ce pas j'ai remarqué qu'il n'y a pas, ne sont pas, euh, donc c'est-à-dire la RDC n'est pas prise en compte par rapport à ce que le, le forum est en train d'organiser aujourd'hui. C'est ça ma question, okay. c'est comment nous pouvons aussi parvenir à être membres, euh, nous considérer aussi par rapport à ce que nous faisons ici, comme je l'ai présenté. Very, very good. Uh, merci beaucoup, uh, Lyon. Our forum will, will answer. Uh, the Thank next one much. to be recognized, the second last is uh, Toby yeah, Akecha. Toby Akecha, you have the floor. Please keep it short. Toby Akecha. Okay, Toby is not coming online. I recognize Atanda Oladejo. Atanda, go ahead. Okay, uh, thank you for this uh, wonderful uh, period of uh, uh, deliberation on uh, how to move uh, Africa forward. I am, like I said, I'm from Obafe Miawolawa University, I live in Nigeria. The activities of uh, Rome Forum is a very prominent one, but I must say this, that like some of my, uh, some of the people that have, have spoken said that it will be good if it is tailored and recognized at national level, because I must tell you in my university, I, we do not really know much here about this, but just because by the fact of my connection with the, uh, the PiPad information, so that's why I just got to know this. So I want to, Said is that it will be good if the uh, the program of Rome Forum is stepped down to the national level, whereby most of the what we are communicating, what I mean, most of our, our the objectives of Rome Forum is I mean, reach the researchers that are working locally, so that we we'll be able to have we we'll be on the same page and we we'll able to move the African forward. So by this, by the way, I am. Uh, a plant breeder, specifically a cowpea breeder, and I know that this cowpea, cowpea has a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, virtue. I mean, quality that we can we can fortify it to 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 curb the uh, problem of uh, malnutrition in, in in Africa. So I'm just working alone, nobody to help me. There is no fund, but we want to. So possibly this could be a, a good opportunity for me if anybody could. Be aware that we can work together to, to move Africa forward because America will not solve the problem for us. We are the one that we work together and more so try as much as possible to, to link up with, I mean, to create a kind of linkage between the, the researcher and the, the policymaker. Because in Nigeria, like I told you, uh, we are experiencing a lot of mess as regards 
the policy we the policy maker they are after what they will the policy they will make where they make gain. So the researchers are just working, they have their own research findings in the shelves. So uh uh that's my, my my worry and my challenge, please. So thank you, thank you very much. Mm. And the, the last one will be Frida Mashandi. Frida, you are the last one. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, for me, I think I'm, I'll just carry it on from the last speaker. Actually, my observation is that um, if there could be a stronger linkage with um, the, the, research, the researchers and also the policy makers, so, so that at the end of the day, they align uh, the ongoing um, activities or the, or the online activities which have to be implemented with the actual uh, result on the ground so that they, they, there's that stronger linkage. Otherwise, there's a gap. Sometimes you find information is on the other side in terms of research, and then you find the policymakers would all, only concentrate maybe on what the, the people are looking forward to, not really looking at uh, what uh, uh, objective results should come out of any activity. Thank you. Thank you, Frida. Um, so at this point, I, I'm closing the interventions from, from participants. And um, I would like, in the interest of time, I would like to request the panelists to respond and at the same time be giving their closing remarks. So um, we need to, otherwise, if we go question by question and then we go to the closing, we shall not have um, enough time for, for, for this. So I would like to request that the, um, the panelists, I'm going to give you an opportunity to, to respond to questions that have been directed to you or to those that you, you think you need to make uh, an intervention on, even though uh, they were not very specific uh, uh, to you. I think I'm going to start with the Professor Adipala. Um, there were several questions that are uh, related to, um, to uh, forum its presence on the ground, how universities, other universities can join, and so on. So Professor Adipala, be the first one to, to respond, and you have three minutes. Thank you very much, our moderator, and again, thank you to everybody, really, for, for participating in this webinar. We, we, we appreciate the comments and the insights you have given. We shall prepare a synthesis report out of the proceedings of this meeting and share it with, uh, with the general public. Also, the recording of this, uh, this webinar will be available uh, online. We shall sh share that. With respect to the membership of the forum, we will encourage your colleagues to, to visit our website. The membership is open to any to all universities that offer postgraduate programs in, in, in recognized postgraduate programs across Africa. Indeed, there are five member universities from DRC Congo. We shall certainly welcome uh, a RIC application for membership from Niger and others. So thank you very, very much. Secondly, we really do, do we have what we call the national forums where we bring universities together with national actors at the country level. We shall try to strengthen that. The comments suggest that we are really not doing as a good job as we should be, we should be doing it. In terms of advancing, expanding um, uh, scholarships, we normally advertise scholarships on our website. I beg that you look at our website. And then in terms of stronger linkage between researchers and policymakers, I think it is a two-way traffic. And let us remember the, the saying in the Quran that if the mountain cannot go to Mohammed, then Mohammed has to go to the mountain. So it has got to be a two-way traffic. And I think definitely having supportive voices like through the, the permanent sector in Kenya and others will be very, very helpful. Also having participation and learning in these webinars is also very, very helpful. So thank you very much, um, um, our moderator and those who have asked questions. Uh, <clears throat> thank you so much, uh, uh, Professor Adipala. Um, I know Honorable Didiza is, is not with us, but is there a representative from South Africa that would like to, to respond to a question or make closing remarks. 
somebody from the Republic of South Africa? Okay, we may not have a representative. Um, now I give a chance to Honorable Cooper, the Minister of Agriculture from Liberia. Honorable Minister, if you have closing remarks or responding to a question. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator, and, and thank you to, to, to the organizers and the participants in this forum. Um, there were several questions that were uh, directed in the chat, um, uh, in the, the question uh, section, and uh, I responded to all of the questions that were directed uh, to us. But in addition, I mean, there's some things that have been said by, by other panelists and, and uh, questions that have been raised that um, I, especially on strengthening the linkages between policy and, and research, um, uh, greater inclusion and visibility for RU Forum and its work that, it's, uh, that is, is happening. Um, I, I want to give just a, 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 a small example from Liberia, which is when we talk about looking within to build our uh, food systems resilience, um, we, 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 we recognize that um, a considerable research has gone into producing certain local varieties of, of even our staple crops, but also um, uh, other crops that um, that research has, has kind of uh, fallen by the wayside. Um, and, and we have become, um, uh, as, as a nation, um, takers of, of yield improvements and, and improved varieties that are being promoted by, by other institutions, probably justifiably so, but to the neglect of our domestic uh, variety. So for those who uh, brought up, made comments or questions about the domestic varieties uh, and indigenous foods, um, this is one of the focus that, that we uh, in the government are looking to work very closely with our research institutions and the universities in particular to promote certain um, domestic varieties of our staple crops as well as other indigenous foods that um, maybe have not been promoted uh, as such for their yield or their potential to address food and nutrition uh, security. We're also looking at, um, and we're, so we're, we're hoping that the scientists will continue, and this has already begun, uh, to provide us with the empirical evidence um, that is needed for us to, to focus on, on the crops that are familiar to our farmers, uh, crops that are familiar, that are familiar to our consumers, and, and seeing how we can improve those uh, even as we um, uh, do not completely discard um, uh, uh, other varieties that are promoted um, from external sources. Um, we also want to look at some of the value chain uh, limitations and value chain um, goes beyond just production, primary production. It also includes um, um, all the way through to consumption and marketing. And we're, we're taking the approach of starting from what the market is demanding, um, domestically, regionally, and internationally, um, and seeing how we can produce to meet the demand rather than produce and then not find that we don't have uh, the demand there or that uh, logistic bottlenecks. If we solve it from, from the demand side rather than from the supply side, uh, we feel we have a better chance of, of uh, addressing bottlenecks as, as they come along. Um, all in all, um, we count on RU Forum. We count on our partners like the EU, especially with the new Team Africa approach that's being proposed uh, to help us to, to expand our, our production, um, to address our value chain limitations, and to, to, to build stronger partnerships with the private sector that includes our universities um, and, and, and research institutions. So I will stop there. Um, thank you very much for this opportunity again. Um, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Honorable Minister, for, for your closing remarks and also for spending your time with the 
yeah, making contributions to this webinar. We really appreciate. Uh, Dr. Mizi, um, your closing remarks and any response to any issue that was raised? Thank you. Thank you, Godfrey. Um, I wouldn't like to elaborate more from what uh, Minister Cooper said. I think um, if, if there are many ministers like her in the, in the African continent, I think we can really do be the game changer in, in this process. For us, policy first. So policies need to be at the core of the transformation process and they have to be farmer and research centered. So policies need to be embedded on, on research needs and on the farmer's needs. Um, if we want to create 1 million jobs in Africa per month, that is what we need to create. We need also to give a clear signal, and this I saw a lot in the chat. We need to give the right signals to the young generation that sustainable agri-food system is part of that rural livelihood and that they don't need young, young uh, ad adolescents to go to the urban, urban areas to find a job. Um, and that is what we try to do in the European Union over, over almost 50, 60 years. This is the rural development approach, a territorial approach where we support um, uh, uh, rural areas in a transformation process to actually create jobs and create livelihoods and be hubs of, of activity. I think there clearly you need to have a clear digital agenda a broadband agenda where you, you, you connect it and provide all the necessary services in terms of public health, in terms of education. Otherwise, young adolescents, young people will move away from rural areas, will, will not see uh, rural areas as a potential of a hub of activity. I would like also to see um, a clear commitment of value chain analysis, uh, departing from commodities and moving up value chains. Otherwise, uh, Africa remains dependent on exports of commodities. This will not do, do the trick because you will be dependent either on the EU, on China, on Brazil, or on the others. And, and this will not, not create value. Um, the issue of Moringa was mentioned. I can mention, if I go to Brussels, um, two kilometers from what I live, um, I pay big prices for Moringa. I pay big prices if I find or for superfoods. You have a number of orphan crops of orphan foods and superfoods, which with some sm um, smart marketing can, can, can secure the highest value, which would benefit uh, women, which would be benefit farmers, organizations and research institutions. But again, this requires a holistic systemic approach like the rapporteur mentioned. And I would like really that the rapporteurs sum up and, and the proceedings of Rural Forum are actually diffused to the ministers. Um, you will also have, as you know, an FAO regional conference of African ministers. Use this op opportunity to actually um, convey the messages because we will integrate uh, what we are saying in the African Union summit and with FAO ministers um, to, to feed into the summit next year, because I think the solutions are there. It's a question of organization and prioritization. So thank you for this opportunity, Godfrey, and for all the participants. And rest assured that the European Union, with our member states, with our research institutions, uh, and all our platforms are there to help you but clearly, you know, you need to help yourselves first, and we can accompany you once uh, clear policies and clear uh, systems approaches are are in place. Over to you. Thank you so much, Leonard, for for that assurance of um, of and commitment of the European Commission to support um, Africa's efforts in this uh, in this agenda. Uh, I see the hand of the representative of the Republic of South Africa. So before going to Malawi, let me recognize uh, Mr. Mokesa Ramasodi. Uh, you can also make your intervention now. Mr. Ramasodi. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson um, um, and Director Fodria. 
Unfortunately, I couldn't get the um, hold of the uh, function to unmute myself, but I see that the function is back. On behalf of Minister Didiza, I would like to welcome all the comments that have been made um, by um, the participants. And I would like to also thank the honorable ministers for the very good guidance that we have had um, together with the participants from the EU. I think I rise on an issue around the resetting of the African policy perspective, just to indicate that um, our view in terms of the proliferation of frameworks should not be on the number of frameworks that we are having um, as Africa, but how these frameworks align with the core uh, frameworks of the AU and how we introduce systematic way um, of introducing structures that would um, deal with research, academia and government in terms of um, the policies and the protection of our uh, agricultural sector. I think there was an issue that was raised by Stemmer and Dalla, and it couldn't be far from the truth in terms of ensuring that Africa use, uses its own uh, endowments um, in the fertilizer world. And I look forward in terms of the discussions going forward, how do we promote agribusinesses that would um, assist us as Africa. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, for allowing South Africa to participate. And I will take all the questions that were asked through to the minister uh, for engagement. Thank you, Mr. Ramasodi. We appreciate uh, your, your comments and concluding remarks. I now give uh, um, Mrs. Maganga from Malawi to make her closing remarks and respond to any question that came from the audience. In particular, I would like to request you if you can say there was somebody who asked about what is being done to, to support or encourage digitalization. Maybe if you can make remarks about uh, what Malawi is doing to um, strengthen or develop digitalization within, um, within agriculture. Mrs. Maganga? Yes, uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, let me also uh, thank uh, Roforum for uh, organizing this meeting once again. Uh, quickly, uh, let me just talk about uh, the importance uh, of the uh, linkage between uh, the universities and uh, governments, uh, especially policymakers in the ministries. Uh, I, I agree with that. And uh, indeed, as the analyst said, uh, there is need uh, for uh, for for both the policymakers, but also the investors to be active in terms of uh, uh, re-engaging or engaging each other, because uh, there are many forums uh, that um, are created, for, for example, in Malawi, where the academia uh, are involved. Even in developing the policies, uh, the academia are always uh, involved. We have technical working groups, uh, joint uh, sector reviews, uh, even policy development. At times, we engage the universities uh, to do that. Uh, for us. So it's a two-way uh, thing where we need both uh, to be proactive uh, in engaging uh, each other. In terms of uh, digital, digitizing agriculture, especially agriculture extension uh, in Malawi, uh, I think we have taken an opportunity of uh, COVID, we have taken as an, an opportunity at this uh, point in time uh, to see if we can indeed uh, digitize our agriculture in terms of uh, at the moment we are focusing on data collection uh, from our extension workers where we have plans uh, to distribute um, uh, the mobile phones, uh, smartphones, uh, but also the tablets uh, to our extension workers uh, to be able uh, to collect uh, information from the field and in real time, we'll be able to get that information at the headquarters. But as you know, uh, we need more resources. Uh, but we have seen of um, FAO, European Union, uh, World Bank, and other projects if uh, that are coming in uh, to support uh, with the uh, with the gadgets. However, I just wanted uh, to say that uh, it's not easy to digitize uh, in Africa, especially uh, when I look at in Malawi in particular. When you look at the rural areas where you have um, farmers, so what we need to do is uh, we want to understand. Uh, the issue of connectivity in the rural areas and how many uh, smallholder farmers at the moment have uh, the gadgets and are able uh, to have uh, like the 4G uh, or 2G where they can uh, be able uh, to get uh, information uh, through data. So I think we are making uh, good progress and um, we should be able uh, in, in a few years to come uh, to be able to 
uh, send extension messages uh, to our uh, smallholder farmers uh, using uh, uh, digital means. Uh, finally, maybe just to talk about uh, crop diversification, to say that um, I look at crop diversification as something that is a, it's a process. Uh, it doesn't happen one day, but uh, with time, because you see, uh, the older generations are quite resistant to uh, accepting new uh, new ways of doing things, new varieties. Uh, you know, they still want to do uh, to use the local varieties. But when you look at the young generation that is coming up, uh, they can easily, you know, adopt uh, and use uh, the new uh, varieties and diversify in their uh, food, uh, the food that they eat, but also um, the, uh, the the crops that they can be grown. So to me, it's a process, and I believe that as Malawi, we are making uh, progress on uh, diversification. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, thank you so much, Mrs. Maganga. Uh, last but not uh, Professor Boga, uh, your uh, closing remarks, but also if you can respond specifically to the question that came from India, and this was how do we spread water resources across the continent uh, for the benefit of Africa's agriculture. Professor Boga. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we have a, a strategy which is aligned to CADIP, is the um, Agriculture Sector Transformation and Growth Strategy, which we launched last year. It has nine pillars. And in these nine pillars, of course, there are two pillars which focus on smallholder farmers, uh, one pillar which focuses on growth. So the smallholder farmer is inclusion. Then there's a, there are two pillars on growth where there's agro-processing and large-scale farming, because we realize that the smallholder model is is a challenge if it is not blended with large scale farms. And there is a pillar which deals with the resilience. And to support these pillars, we have enablers. And one of the enablers is capacity building, the other enabler is digitization, data, and research. And then the last enabler is the risk management. So for the pillars with capacity building and the pillars with digitization, data, and the uh, research, we see a big role here for universities, and we have sensitized our universities about these uh, pillars, which we are really driving so as to transform our agriculture. I think the engagement between universities and uh, the, the, the government, from where I see it now, it really requires a consciousness on the part of government and deliberate steps to set up structures that will make sure that universities are involved in all processes. In the UK, every ministry has a scientific advisor who is not an employee of the ministry, is an independent position. I found that quite useful. We had gone there on a trip on synthetic biology research and you could see, although he was in the Ministry of Business, and, uh, and, and industrial development, but these guys could understand synthetic biology, although they were not biologists themselves, because they had a scientific advisor who could bring them up to speed. And I think we need such deliberate structures in our own system so that science is not accidental or is not used in an opportunistic way, but it's used in a deliberate way. It's supported in a deliberate way. It's involved in a deliberate way so that we don't make mistakes first before going to the universities, but we actually deliberately do it. Sitting in a policy position, I think we have a long way to go. Most, mo 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 most, mostly we tend to rush into things and then think about the science and the research later. And uh, so I think universities on their part, they have to challenge orthodoxy there are a lot of weird things we are doing um, because we saw other people do them and we keep on carrying them forward. Universities have to play their role of challenging orthodoxy and not just uh, observing status quo. And I think uh, over the last decades, the universities have gone silent and the vibrancy that was there in the 80s has uh, gone down, especially in Kenya. I'm not sure about the other places. Finally, we have a lot of policies, 
that have been put in place together beautiful. We have a beautiful STI policy that talks about uh, science as the foundation for development, but we don't back it with implementation. We don't support the institutions that we have created. And sometimes resource allocation and prioritization is a political process. And sometimes even at our level as technocrats, we get overwhelmed by the political negotiations. And uh, in the end, uh, uh, the things that we have prioritized and documented and made into laws, they are still defeated by political decisions. So I think our political institutions have to create the environment that will allow economic as well as scientific institutions to thrive. And there, I think we have a lot of work to do so that uh, we, we are able to move uh, together. Regarding the issue of water resources, I think it has to start with conservation. Uh, I know the challenge of uh, water moving, Ethiopia, in Kenya, Uganda being the catchment for the Nile and also for other rivers within countries and those that cross borders. I think that is a complex issue that uh, requires, of course, the uh, African Union and global treaties being negotiated to support uh, share, sharing of these resources in an equitable way. But I think it's beyond my, my, my paycheck. Finally, uh, regarding digitization, we just launched our digital digitization of agriculture strategy. And uh, the, the Kenya is a very vibrant place as well as digitization is concerned. When we were doing the strategy, we came across over 100,000 applications that are applied in agriculture, mostly by the private sector. For the government, we just prioritize about seven use cases that is extension, e-voucher for input uh, supply, monitoring and evaluation, and of course, uh, a digital food balance sheet is one of them, and land optimization model for agriculture, and of course, uh, uh, how to share data, the issues of private farmer registration, how the private sector can bring in their data, research institution can bring in their data. We have a big data platform, supported by World Bank, uh, situated at Calro, which we hope universities and everybody will leverage to support the agriculture sector. Thank you very much. Hello? Hello, I'm done. I yes, the, mod the moderator was off. Yeah, yeah, I'm surprised. I thought I was talking to myself. <laughs> yeah, I lost, uh, I lost uh, <laughs> a connection for, for about uh, a minute or so. But uh, uh, Professor, I think you had concluded your remarks. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Thank you so much, Pro Professor Boga. Okay. Um, and, and I was saying, um, Patrick, you had given your views. But do you want to have um, two minutes uh, of final reflection in case something new came up? Uh, thank you very much for forum uh, for arranging this meeting. I'll just say two things. One is that uh, the issues we are dealing with are not necessarily new. I think the problem is, and I'm talking again from my experience from a university into a, a research agency and then working with the national programs. I think there is a very weak, the link between universities, uh, research and delivery is actually there, except that it is highly fragmented and run more or less on individual basis. So there is need for structural engineering to allow that to happen, as Prof has just said. Um, the universities are highly part, I mean, compartmentalized and that makes it almost impossible for you to run a system-wide type of, of, of research to deliver impacts the way we want them to. So these are conversations that must be going on internally. And I know universities are, go, are doing that, including my old department in Makere. So I'm optimistic that things are happening. They may not move as fast as we want, but yes, they are. Digital agriculture is happening, but there are issues of broadband 
And yes, um, there is an opportunity for it to catalyze access to knowledge, control access to information, markets, and things like that. And finally, for me, the thing that worries me is the very limited role of African University in this new threat that we have. The problem of biosurveillance, bioprospect, bioprospecting, and biosecurity. We about, we have almost the largest bioresources around us in Africa now, and it is important that Africa's intelligentsia plays a critical role. The resurgence of Ebola recently is a good example in Congo after thinking we had controlled it. And uh, the, the emergence of coronaviruses and many others, there's the, the Nile, the Nile uh, disease that affects both human beings and, and livestock and many such other zoonoses. So I think universities need to play a bigger role and be part of this one world, one health system, which is actually the way to go. You have the intelligentsia, you have the young people, you have the, the broad diversity to be able to deliver. That's what I just wanted to say. The university has the right ecosystem for us and subsystems for us to develop a much broader, much more complex research agenda that Africa needs. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Patrick. Um, now that brings me to my own uh, final comments. And when I'm done, I will request uh, uh, Professor Adipala to be the one that has the last word and, and close the, uh, the webinar. Um, so I, I start by again thanking the, the participants and especially the honorable ministers who, as we know, are very, very busy people, uh, but we, we note the, the commitment they, they have made by being with us throughout this, uh, this webinar. We thank you um, so much. Um, you, you note that during the, the webinar, I was making summaries after each of the of the speakers, so I'm not going to repeat uh, those, uh, those summaries. They will be reflected within the proceedings of this webinar that will be produced and circulated by, by um, uh, the forum. However, um, I can give maybe five or six uh, uh, you know, takeaways um, that, that I have got out of this. Uh, the first one is um, the need out of this discussion, the need to develop a coherent agenda uh, from the discussions that will be the basis for seeking support uh, from partners. That was a clear call. Uh, second, that the outcomes, a summary of the outcomes of this discussion, we need to take them to the AU EU ministerial that will be held at the end of this month and also to the AU EU summit that will happen um, towards the end of October. The third takeaway um, that came from several speakers was the need for reform to invest uh, in popularizing its interventions at the national level um, came out quite clearly. Um, the whole dis number four was this whole discussion on, on the need to strengthen uh, research outcomes. Uh, to, to policy. But as we heard from, from uh, Professor Boga, this is an ever increasing um, uh, process because it's not, it's not something easy, and, um, but it is something that needs to be worked on to link uh, research from universities to inform policy processes. The fifth takeaway was the need for governments to invest uh, uh, in research and take deliberate, take deliberate steps to involve universities, uh, including having uh, them as advisors uh, in, uh, in, in discussions and policy uh, platforms as necessary. Another takeaway was the, the call uh, to compile or collect best practices on ag transformation on the continent and have those shared uh, out for potential uh, scaling out and, and scaling up. Um, the other takeaway was uh, based on the different shocks that have happened to Africa's agriculture, whether you are talking about the foramen worm, the desert locust, 
the COVID-19, uh, it is important to, be, to invest more by African governments in the agriculture sector to make it more resilient so that we don't, um, uh, we don't have to be uh, running up and down every time we have uh, a shock. The African food systems ought to be resilient enough to resist the impacts of these pandemics because COVID-19 or the desert locusts are not, are not going to be the last shocks. We shall have them more. But if we have built strong and resilient food systems, we should be able to cope better um, uh, uh, and recover faster uh, from these interventions. And finally, the other takeaway was um, a call to use these, uh, the outcomes of this webinar and other webinars that uh, Reform has organized uh, to find a space uh, for them in the discussions that will be shaking, shaping the UN Food Systems Summit in 2021. So honorable ministers, um, colleagues and friends, uh, those were the, the, take out, the quick takeaways that, that I was able to summarize. But like I said, others will be captured and reflected in the proceedings of our webinar. So with that, uh, that brings me to the end of my role as moderator for this, uh, for this webinar. And I thank you so much for your indulgence. I enjoyed the rich discussions and contributions from the ministers, the other panelists, as well as from you, the participants that have made this uh, a rich, a very rich and rewarding uh, um, webinar. So with that, thank you so much. And I hand over to Professor Adipala for his final remarks and closing of this webinar. Over to you, Professor. Thank you very much, Dr. Bahigwa, our moderator for this session. Thank you, the, all the panelists, for, 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 for this webinar. Thank you, Dr. Patrick Okori, for, for the discussions. I think are basically three things. We have taken three things to communicate. One, we have taken note of the, the suggestions and action points recommended, and we will follow it up, compile them, and share with the relevant authorities or organs, particularly the EU, AU platforms, and also the, the UN summit that is being mentioned. Two, we also will follow up with the, the various partners, especially our member universities. We need to strengthen our engagement with, 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 with policy. I know it's a weak area uh, for, 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 for us as universities and broadly researchers, but we cannot do much without policy support. So we need to strengthen that, that, that our capacity and level for translating our research outputs uh, to inform policy. My humble request is that for, to plead for patience uh, 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 and mentoring from our policymakers. Be, be patient with us. You know, being universities, we are full of ideas and sometimes they may appear very radical but really, they, it is only our, our strong interest to wish to contribute to the dialogue affecting our people. So we'd like to, to do that. Then finally, on part of the forum network, we take, we take note of the, some of the action recommendations, strengthening our presence on, on the ground, making sure the opportunities that we sometimes are able to marshal, we make sure that they, 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 are, they, are, they are very, 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 very more widely known. We shall, we shall continue to to do our best to, to communicate that. And as I mentioned, we will share the outcome of this meeting with all you audience. Feel free to make comments so that we can, um, we can finish. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.